Welcome to the Ignorance of Strength Podcast. I'm your host, Fabian Motherfucking Ojeda, and I don't know shit, but that's okay. All right, all right, let's get this shit started. Uh, thank you all for listening to the Ignorance of Strength Podcast. Hope you all enjoyed episode number 42 with Taylor Regano. Uh, you know, she talked a lot about weight loss surgery, so if that's something you're considering. Uh, Definitely listen to that one, but we're back today with a brand new guest and I'm excited to have her on because this is a subject that I've wanted to talk about for quite a while now. Um, We'll talk about a few things, but you know, the meat of the conversation, we will definitely explore the world of OnlyFans. So I want to welcome today to the podcast, brand new guest. Let's welcome Victoria Desbians. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you. Did I say that right? Desbians? It's Debian, but it's it's French, so it's, you know, most people aren't going to know that it's French, so it's all good. Say that one more time. It's Debian. De, I, can't, I can't even pronounce that. I know, it's French, so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> really hard well, at least I spelled it right, so we'll, yeah. be, we'll be good with that. Um, right. You know, but really, like, like I said, uh, before we started, I want to thank you for, you know, jumping on, being willing to talk about this. Um, it's definitely something I think a lot of people have interest in. Um, maybe they don't talk about it, you know, but um, they're, they're going to listen, you know, and, and I've, I got a lot of feedback on Instagram. Um, we'll talk about the social media says poll that I put out. Uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll, like I said, that'll be the meat of the conversation. You know, we'll talk a little bit to you about, you know, your, uh, your other social media, which is uh, your, your YouTube channel that you just started. And then maybe we'll, you know, we'll jump into some, uh, some MMA talk later on. How's that sound? Sounds perfect. I'm good. It sounds exciting. <laughs> perfect. All right. So I want to, you know, I want to just jump right in there. And for people who may not know, you know, what OnlyFans is, uh, f- you know, there's, maybe there's still some people out there who don't know what it is, you know, um, just kind of let's, you know, describe it. What is it? What is the platform? How does it work? You know, um, from from what I understand, it's kind of it's almost sort of like a social media type of thing where it's like a subscription base, right? Yeah, I mean, most of it is like some people can have it subscription or free. I have mine free, so people can just sub to it, and then if they want to pay for a paid post, then they can. Like that's how I do it. But most people just have it where they have like the subscription, and then they just post whatever they want, and then people can tip or whatever. But I just found like it's easier if you make the account free so that people can click on it and follow. And then if they like what they see on your free stuff, then maybe that'll in, like intrigue them to buy some of your paid stuff, if that makes sense. So what is like a, a follow or a subscription entail? What, a, what, a, what, a, what, a, what does a user get like for, you know, without paying anything? Because since you mentioned that your account is uh, free. I mean, I just kind of post whatever I want. Like, it's mostly just nudes, but I mean, I'll post like other stuff like my YouTube channel or just like TikToks. Like, I'll just post whatever things that I want to post um, that I don't want to post on my Instagram, really, or that I can't. <laughs> okay. So it's it's kind of more so uh, if they subscribe, they're, they're able to see a preview of things and they're able to communicate with you back and forth, right? Correspond? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. People can DM me. Like, I literally will answer anybody. Like, whoever messages me, I'll talk to them because I just have a lot of time on my hands. So, you know, I just talk to whoever messages me. Right. And most people just tip me just because they're like, oh, wow, I'm surprised you even replied. And I'm like, I, I'm not like that. I'm going to reply to whoever messages me on whatever platform, you know. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, I, I mentioned that we had a I put out a social media says poll. Um, and actually it's still live right now. Um, but I asked the question, you know, and I asked it kind of, uh, from a divided, you know, point of view, because I think that's what most people have of a site like this. Um, I asked, you know, OnlyFans, do you think it's empowering for women or it's, or it's kind of trashy, right? (laughs) And would you agree that maybe people have like that same sort of kind of like divided point of view? I definitely see like where it could be um, trashy because like, yeah, it's probably not a good look if you're trying to get a job in like a corporate world, but like it makes decent coin. Like 
all these girls, they been sending them out for free for how many years and now they have something that they could like actually earn from it. It's like, why wouldn't you do that? You know? Mm-hmm. Um, so what percentage uh, of people do you think uh, thought that it was uh, empowering for women? Probably like 50%. About 50%. Okay. So then you think it's 50, 50, 50 between the two. Um, yeah. For a while, uh, probably for the, for, you know, the majority of the time the poll was up, it was at 50 50, um, but it's a little bit, uh, it's, it's a little bit leaning more one way than the other right now. So what I have is uh, for empowering for women, it's about 38%. Um, and then 62% say that it's kind of trashy, right? Really? Um, yeah. And, and, and you know what really surprised me is when I look at the people who, who voted, you know, um, since I know, I do know a lot of them, you know, my podcast is rather local. So um, I do know most of the people that, that vote. Um, I was really surprised to see that a lot of the people that are more like forward thinking, you know, uh, uh, I would say more like liberal in their thought. Um, they actually said that it was kind of trashy, you know, That's crazy. <laughs> does, does that surprise you? Like I get it from both sides, but it's like, I just see it from the girl's perspective. Like, I mean, so many dudes are like, I want to see that. I want to see this. It's like, okay, well, why not make some coin off of it? Like you don't have to be, a major movie star to like mm-hmm. get coined that way too, you know? Right. And so do you think uh, more men or women were on board with it? I feel like more women are more on board with the only fans than men. You're going to be surprised. There was actually more men that said it was empowering for women. Really? Um, <laughs> really yeah. Crazy. Maybe they're, maybe they're, you know, potential subscribers. Maybe that's it, you know? <laughs> Yeah, probably. I'm like, I think most, I mean, if it's females that said it's trashy, it's probably because they're just jealous that they can't make the coin that I've made already. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you, do you see that a lot? Do you get like a lot of uh, like hate uh, or, 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 or jealousy uh, your mm-hmm. way? I don't get like direct hate or jealousy. Like it's more like low key shade. Like they'll never call it out or like they'll never say names or like DM me first, but like I'll see stories of people like just like low key shading. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Like I'll still follow them and they still follow, but they don't like support anything. They don't like anything or do any of that. And I'm like, whatever, it's all good. I mean, most of it, I just listen to the people that actually want me to continue it. You know, like mm-hmm. I don't really care what people say. Cause like I've already lived through enough stuff in my real life. So like anything on the internet is not going to affect me. Like I don't, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to make coin. <laughs> okay. There you go. This is a means to an ends right there. Um, you know, I think uh, one of the, one of the things that I've heard uh, from a lot of people about, you know, this site, uh, when people are kind of like debating it back and forth is that like, well, there's a lot of, you know, free porn online already. Like, yeah. why would, why would I need to go and spend money and subscribe, uh, on a website like, like this? Um, what do you, why do you think that is? What's the appeal of, of something like only Onlyf- only fans, as opposed to, uh, you know, just kind of randomly searching up like, like a porno site. I think the difference is because like, you know, when you go into like Pornhub or whatever, like, you can like and subscribe, but you can't talk to them. But on OnlyFans, you can almost guarantee that you're going to get a response and actually talk to them. Like, I'm not really like the money is obviously a bonus, but like I do enjoy talking to people like I'm not like if people talk to me and don't tip me at all, like I'm literally just fine with having a conversation. Like if they want to tip me, that's great. But like, you know, I don't really care for them. Like it's fun. It's fun. And the money's great, but like, I'm there to just entertain people and mm-hmm. just make them happy, you know? And I don't know. It's nice to talk to some people that are that like, they try to understand through my, like they actually listen to me. Like I actually talk to like fans. Like I'd consider them just like people that follow me or whatever, like friends, but like they actually care about me. Like they mm-hmm. actually care about like my well being, and they'd be like, well, I hope that, it's all good for you. And I hope that like everything is all good. Like, you know what I mean? Like they actually like want to know more about my life, you know, it's just more interaction and more engaging and more personal. What is that? Personal interaction. That's what it is. Right. So it seems like uh, from what I, from from what I understand, what you're saying is that, uh, and I'm assuming it's men mostly, right? 
Yeah, I mean, I get some girls, but usually the girls are just like, you want to do shout out for shout out? I'm like, yeah, that's totally cool. Like, I make online friends through there, but like, mostly it's the dudes that I talk to, but some are a bit creep, but most of them are pretty chill. Like, they actually just want to know more about my fighting history and things like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. So the, it seems like uh, the the benefit in their, in their eyes is that they build a rapport, they build a relationship of sorts, like a friendship of sorts. Yeah, um yeah. And so that's kind of kind of the payoff, right? I um, think. Do you do you know any other uh, girls that that do this that have like the same perspective that you do, or is it more kind of like, uh, you know, I'm all business about it. I'm all I'm all about money making. I mean, I definitely know most girls are about the money, but like, yeah, I don't know if I know anybody specifically because like, I don't really talk to other girls about their OnlyFans just because mm-hmm. like, I feel like that's not really my business, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, most people I've talked to, they're just in it for the money. And like, I'd be like, so how did you like start it? And they'd just be like, I just got a lot of requests, like people asking me if I had one. And then I'd be like, no, I didn't. But then people tell me I should make one. And then I made one. And I'm like, oh, that's one like. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I think, you know, from from what I've seen, though, the not everybody does it free. I mean, that's kind of an anomaly that you do it for free, right? Like most people have some sort of subscription, like charge or rate. Yeah, I just honestly, like, I care more about, like, how many people are watching me rather than the coin, because, like, I already have a job, like, I can make money other ways, like, I'm just doing it to, like, get to know people and, like, you know, actually get my name out there, you know, I'm not really, money is just, it's just an extra bonus, but, like, that's not my, I don't rely on OnlyFans for an income. I guess what I'm getting at is that, like, what is the you know, what is a typical charge? Like what is a, a, a typical model on their charge per month? If they charge? I usually see, I usually see like five to $10. I've seen some that do 20, but like, mm-hmm. that's if they're like really successful, but most girls that are like my level, I see like five to $10 subs. I've heard upwards of, yeah, like 20, 25, $30. And, and I'm thinking like, damn, you gotta be really entertaining. Cause you're, you're paying like, <laughs> You know, Disney Plus and uh, 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 Netflix combined money there, you know? For real. I'm like, dude, I can't pay that much. Like, I'm not that interesting. <laughs> I feel like if you already have a name and, like, people already love you, they'll pay that. But, mm-hmm. like, if people don't know you, you got to make it cheap so that people will at least be intrigued to, like, want to click it and then follow you and continue to follow you, follow if they like it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, I mean, like, I'm, you know, I'm not on there. I, I actually... Uh, you know, uh, I, I I wouldn't be able to because in looking at my bank account, I would be like, oh, like, and then it's not, you know, no offense, because I think what, you know, you do, you do what you do. And and, and oh, it's just that, like, I, I think I once had a bad experience when um I remember I I, uh, I went to the strip club for like a, a birthday party or something like that or a bachelor party. And they actually uh, they canceled my card. Right. And so the next morning I had to go. Uh, to work and I was coaching like, uh, I don't know, it was like a soccer game or some sport that I don't know, right? And I go to buy some stuff for the kids and, and my card is declined, right? So I have to call the, the bank and be like, hey, what's going on with uh, with my card, right? And they're like, oh, there was some suspicious activity. I'm thinking suspicious activity? What did I do? I'm like, oh, duh, I was at the, I was at the strip club, right? So it was yeah. very embarrassing having to call and explain to, you know, a little old lady on the phone, like, no, ma'am, those, you know, uh, those hundreds of dollars all went to that ass, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, um, so I can't imagine, like, if there was suspicious activity from like a website like that, you know, I'd have to call up again and be like, hey, ma'am, it's me again. Yeah. Uh, funding that ass. Can you, re, re, you know, can you restart my card? <laughs> oh my god that's funny <laughs> so, so yeah that's that's why i i can't really you know get on board with that too much i'd probably have to be like super anonymous for that i mean uh, honestly like i wish that they did set it up differently like because i know that like even some people have even brought it to my attention they're like i'm not gonna sub because it asked me for like payment information i'm like i feel like it shouldn't ask you for payment information like i feel like it should just ask like for your ID verification or something like, and then let you follow them without having to pay anything. And then if you want to pay, then you just enter your payment information. It's just like, if you want to do online shopping, like you can add it to your cart, 
but like if you don't want it you can just exit out and nothing happens you know yeah i mean that's maybe something they should consider you know i think um one of the things that i've uh, I've kind of uh wondered about is like how you know the money works you know um you don't have to get into specifics but would you say that you make a decent amount of money on there i mean like i've made like okay i'll be honest like i literally only went onto only fans because like i wanted to see how far i could take it and like i made it pretty damn high like i made it to like top 2.4 percent in like three months and like mm -hmm. When you hit to like top 1%, you're making like 20K a month. And I made like almost 10K just in like three months. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. Cause I like, I see, you know, people online and, and, you know, there's like one girl specifically that, that is on Instagram that, you know, claims to have made like a living wage from it, you know, claims to may have made like, you know, 40 to 50,000 a year off of, off of it. Um, yeah. And I'm wondering, is that really, you know, is that doable? Is that feasible? And But from what you're saying, it's completely doable. Just, I mean, it's a matter of, you know, how you, how you get there. I think it's more of like how you market yourself. Because like Trisha Paytas, I don't know if you know her, but like she literally had like she like her least amount is like 150K. And then she makes up to like a million dollars per month. Wow. Like she's a YouTuber. So like, I just feel like the more people that know who you are, like, just like, if you keep getting fans, you're always going to have money rolling in, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think it's just like, if you have a huge following, it's pretty easy to live off of. But if like people don't know who you are and they don't know what your content is, like it's real, it's much harder to live off of, if that makes sense. Right. Um, as far as the, the money is goes as well, do they, does the website take a percentage of what you earn? Oh yeah, definitely. Like it's, I could even try to like give you an example, but like, it's definite. Like if, if, I, if somebody pays like a $10 tip, you only get like $8 of that. Mm. So they definitely take a lot, but yeah, let's see. What did I get? Hold on. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, they take around $2 if it's like $10 and then obviously they take more as higher as it goes, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's, I also try to make my prices a lot lower so that they don't take as much. If that makes sense, like try to make my prices low so that the only balance doesn't take as much percentage, if that makes sense. Right. No, it does. Um, do you, you know, understand how the taxes work around that too? Cause then around tax time, I, I would assume that, you know, uh, well, I don't know how, cause you're Canadian. So I don't know how you guys, you know, do it over there, but, um, you know, in here in the U.S., uh, I imagine most people would be considered, you know, independent contractors and they would have to pay the money, the tax money um, at the end of at the end of the year. Um, do you know how any of that works or have you have you have you gotten to that point yet? So I have not gotten to that point yet, just because like. Like I, I haven't made it to 10K exactly. Like I've made around there. Like I haven't made it exactly 10K. But I think in Canada, if you start making 10K or more, then you have to start claiming taxes. But you don't have to if it's anything less than that. But um, on the website for US people, they can. It actually has like a whole like FAQ section for taxes for US people, so they can like fill out stuff so that they can file it when it comes time around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think if you make a dollar off of it, they want to tax you here, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely, right? Yeah, but so, I think in Canada, it's anything over 10K, then you have to claim it. Okay. Um, But you haven't had it for a year yet? No, I've only had it for like four months. It'll be literally like four months tomorrow, so. Okay. Yeah. Now, you know, a, a, a lot of people, when, when you know, you start one of these things, they, they, they start to think like, why, right? So I kind of want to get into like the how, the when, you know, the why, like, why did you, why did you start off? Like what triggered it? How did, how did you get into this whole thing? Uh, I mean, if you really want me to be honest here, I mean, this is like, I broke up with my ex-boyfriend and then he really didn't like that. I wanted to do it. Cause I was like, Hey, we can make money with this. Like, cause like we both were really freaky too. Right. Mm -hmm. And then he was just like, not about that life at all. He's like, I'm not trying to like share you with the world. I'm like, okay, hey, whatever. Right. And then we broke up and I'm like, well, I'm going to just see how far I could take this by myself and mm -hmm. then look where we're at. <laughs> right. Right. 
Um, so it was just kind of on a whim that you started it? I think so. Like I did want it for a couple of months before, but I never did it. And then just like out of the blue, I was like, I'm just going to start doing what I want. And then I just made a YouTube channel. I made the OnlyFans and then I just started working on them and trying to grow on Instagram and then get them to get to my OnlyFans through that way. Yeah. And I think Instagram's kind of been a, a, a good way to, for you, for your, uh, for your, your brand to grow. Right. Because I mean, I, I don't know who you are, but you know, like uh, um, I think I follow a lot of MMA stuff and I did start seeing your, your profile like circulated through like a lot of these, like, you know, Oh, check out these MMA girl butts. Right. And <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you know but once you see once you see like the same picture like three or four times you're like okay maybe this is somebody you know yeah definitely and, <laughs> and, and so i started to follow and then you know um yeah i noticed all the other things you posted uh you know and and um that's when i asked you to you know come on and talk about it you know but <laughs> sure what you know uh what it what it what it what has been your your like your experience so far I means it's been positive for the most part um, I think for, I mean, for the, for the website, I mean, have you had any kind of like craziness on there? Um, I think the most crazy thing that I've ever had like sent to me on OnlyFans was some dude, he sent me a video of himself completely naked and he was in an elementary schoolyard and he was like jerking off in a schoolyard oh. filming himself. And I was like, I don't even think this is legal. <laughs> like, I don't. I just reported it to OnlyFans, but I don't know if they've done anything with it. But yeah, like that was probably the most grossest, weirdest thing I've ever had happen on that site. That's pretty disgusting. Yeah, and like he showed his full face and everything, and I'm like, dude, like, what an idiot. <laughs> and yeah, he literally like sent it through. Like, so now it's literally on the internet forever. So like, anybody can like it's on OnlyFans. So whoever it's passed along to can see that and like whatever they want to do with that. But yeah, I was like, I'm just not going to talk to this person. <laughs> like, I don't want to talk to people like that. Like, I don't even want to talk to people that send me dick pics. I'm just like, dude, like I'm here to entertain you. I don't want you to entertain me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, with that being said too, I think uh, a lot of people might have like, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, misinterpretation of like what exactly is shown on the site too, because, you know, I did get a lot of feedback from the social media says poll. And a lot of people seem to think that it's a very like, like a soft core kind of website, but it's, I mean, it's, it is whatever you make it right. It's not necessarily just like, you know, you post like nude pictures or anything like that. I mean, it could be up and in, includes like, like uh, actual, like you're, you're actually showing like sex videos and stuff like that, or like, Literally, like, my ex-boyfriend, he told me how there was one girl that started an OnlyFans and, like, she didn't do anything sexual, like, nothing sexual. She would just do weird stuff, like, drink raw eggs, and, like, she became, like, top 1%. Like, you don't even have to do sexual stuff, and you can make coin. Like, as long as it's just stuff people want to pay for, like, you can huh. literally succeed, succeed in any um, category that you want. Like, huh. look at Cardi B. She doesn't, she has one, but she's not posting anything new. Yeah, I, I didn't know that either, but because I've I think I read some stories about you know some celebrities that started the you know their accounts. People were expecting like all of this craziness on there, um, and and they paid I think like a high rate for subscription, and then all of a sudden they get kind of almost like catfish well in their eyes, right? Yeah. Um, because they were expecting all of this and then they get nothing. <laughs> they get right. you know the same stuff you would see on Instagram or something like that. So I yeah. guess it really really is what you make it, right? Definitely. Like, yeah, Cardi B, like she even said, like, she's like, I'm going to make an OnlyFans, but like, it's not going to be any sexual stuff. Like, it's just going to be like behind the scenes stuff that people want to see, you know? So, I mean, people like Tana Mojo, like, yeah, she's kind of like made it to be like that scam type of thing. Cause like she made it free and then people would pay for a post and she's just wearing a bikini. It's like, but you, you advertised it as to be like full nude, you know? So like, I feel like people just hear rumors of like Tana Mojo and Bella Thorne and all those girls that are like actually scamming people. And then they're just like turned off from it, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, do they give a bad name to the whole thing or you, or, or in your opinion, it's just like, Hey, do your thing. I mean, I don't think Bella Thorne really helped the whole thing, but, you know, like, I'm still doing my own thing. I try not to, like, 
worry about what other people are doing. But I feel like Bella Thorne definitely did um, cause a lot of issues because like now you have to wait longer for your payout and you have to like, there's so many more rules and things like that just because of her. So like, Mm. that's the only bad thing, but whatever. Okay. Get your coin where you can. Right, right. Now, um, and and, and you can share as little or as much as you want here, but um, how like explicit do you get on there? Like what, what are you willing to do on there? Like you specifically? Um, I'm willing to do pretty much anything. I mean, like literally I just posted like a f- pretty much a full porn video of just myself, like for free for everybody to watch for just because like they sub to my OnlyFans and my YouTube. And I was like, yo, if you want to sub to my YouTube, then you can get this free stuff. Like I won't make you pay for anything. So it's mm. free to follow and free to watch that stuff. So you know, I told you it's all about like I'm trying to get my name out there and get more people to know who I am, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. No, for sure. Um, now, as far as, you know, uh, like like a best uh, tip, have you have, what's like the highest tip you've ever gotten on there? I think it was like fifty dollars or yeah, oh. 50 or 65. But yeah, he wanted like a whole bunch of stuff together. So I was like, I mean, that's a lot to me. I don't know what it would be for other girls, but Mm -hmm. yeah, most of my, I get most of my money through tips and posts and then messages as well. But definitely posts are like the number one moneymaker for my OnlyFans for sure. Okay. Nice. Nice. Now, you know, speaking, speaking socially, right. Um, And, and I've talked, I talked to you before, before we started recording and I understand your, you know, personal, situations and whatnot but how you know in general how would you say that you know family and friends if they're a factor you know how do they take uh this like when they under when they when they know that you're on a a website like this like uh, are they judgmental or is anybody supportive of it um what 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 is that like Mm, well (laughs) to be fair nobody in my family knows and it's gonna stay that way i'm gonna make sure nobody knows and then all my friends like literally I've not had one person tell me a bad thing. Like literally all my, like, I wouldn't know, like they're not my friends, but they're just like people I talk to on Instagram, but like, they'll just be like, hell yeah, girl, get it. Like, I do not have any hate, like, or I don't really get a lot of hate. Like if it's hate, then like, it's just going to be like swept under the rug. Like I really don't really pay attention to that stuff. Like I get some weird comments, like people just trying to talk shit, but then like, I try to like, laugh it off with them like I try to like accept it and then like be like yeah I could see it from your side you know and then just laugh mm-hmm. about it and then just like move on you know and then people are just like this chick's actually really cool like she's not trying to like fight back or anything like I literally had somebody he sent me a dm and it wasn't really the nicest thing but like he wasn't trying to be mean but he was like trying to give me constructive ki- criticism mm-hmm. and like I was just like well thank you like I really appreciate it like for your response or whatever like and I just laughed it off I was like I could totally see where it's co- where you're coming from on that or whatever and he's like oh wow like I thought you were gonna like be mean and like block mm-hmm. me and I'm like no I'm like I'm pretty chill <laughs> so you mentioned like your family doesn't know about it like how do you keep that under wraps when you're really actively promoting on your Instagram and, and, you know, trying to get your name out there. How do you balance the two? I just block everybody. <laughs> I just block my family members and then I just hope that they never come across it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you, I mean, uh, you know, not to put you on a spot with that, but I mean, what do you, what, what are you going to say if, and when they find out? And be like, yo, I'm an adult. I'm making decent coin. Like, let me do what I want. You know, like they can't really tell me what to do. I'm almost, 24 so i'll be 24 at the end of this year but like i'm a full grown adult making my own coin paying my own way doing my own thing like they mm-hmm. can't really tell me what I, what I can and can't do anymore you know and yeah, like sure. especially if i'm not promoting like i'm not making myself attached to them like i'm making myself my own person so that like if people want to go like find out more about me like it only goes to me like people don't find out who my family members are if that makes sense if that i don't know if that makes sense i don't know <laughs> does it I, <laughs> I mean just keep them as under wraps as possible right block them and uh, yeah make sure they don't make sure they don't see it yeah um, like, I, like actually there's a girl that so like she's 
an in-law. So like, she's not blood or anything, but like just related by marriage or whatever. And she actually, like, she asked me about my only fans or whatever. And uh, she's like, I want to make one too, but like, I don't know how to start. And like, I literally gave her all the tips and she made one. And then like, we follow each other on it. And I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> I sent her a message. I was like, I'm going to be posting stuff. Like that's pretty like explicit. So don't tell anybody. <laughs> she's like, girl, I got you. She's like, we won't say nothing. I was like, I got you. <laughs> No, you know what's surprising? I think um, when I put the uh, social media says thing out there on Instagram, uh, there were a couple of people, a couple of of, of uh, women that responded and said that they were actually, uh, you know, considering, you know, doing it. So I think it's not as you know uh, out there these days for 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 women to consider, you know, trying their hand at it, seeing if they can make some money off of it, you know, because like you mentioned, why just kind of give it away for free when there might be a market out there, right? Yeah, I mean, like, honestly, like, I feel like once you get known, like, the money just comes with it, you know? Like, if people love you, they'll pay no matter what you put out, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, like, I've just seen it happen with YouTubers, like, people that before the Jeffree Star scandal and all that, like, people would just buy it because they love Jeffrey. Like, even if they didn't like the product that much, like, they just bought it just to support Jeffrey. So it's like... If people love you enough, the money will just come with it, you know? Maybe I'm not, you know, as, uh, uh, what do you call it, hip to the times, but what do you, what do you mean the Jeffree Star scandal? Because I'm, I'm sure that some people listening that are like a little more my age, you know, uh, 30, 30s and whatnot, they might not understand what that means. Well, like recently, like in the past year, like it's all drama, bullshit drama, but like it's just YouTube stuff. And like the biggest stars on YouTube and like happened to be like Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star, I guess they were both like called out for their like racist acts and things like that. Like they were just like really hurt. Like, like they hurt a lot of their audience and they're just not willing to come out and address it and apologize properly. And like so many people are unsupported, like unfollowing and not buying their stuff because like, they won't apologize for like their disgusting acts. Like even Jaden, uh, not Jaden, um, Jada Smith, like, you know, Willow and Jaden Smith, uh, mom, she even called out Shane Dawson for tell like being like, you're so disgusting. Like, cause like Shane Dawson admitted, he admitted that like he did some nasty stuff to like Willow's pick like poster when she was like 10 years old. And like, like nobody needs to know this, but like, Ew, why would you want to support somebody that's like that? Like he just, he has like disgusting sense of like, not sense of humor, but like, I don't know how to describe it. Like mm. people just, I don't know. It's just ridiculous. They're just not good people. And people are finally seeing that they're basically like men. They're like mean girls, but guys, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, what, what was that? There were mean girls. Yeah, so, like, they are just basically, like, the mean girls of the internet, but they're dudes. Like, they just, they talk shit about everybody that they oh, need like, to have no like respect. Comments and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, they just, like, do mean girl stuff, like, talk behind each other's back and things like that. And, you know, just trying to, like, hurt other people's career for no reason, you know? Right, right. The whole thing all over YouTube, so. Okay, well, that's not helping anybody. no. I wanted to, to ask a question uh, as far as like, let's say, you know, one day you, you, you know, you, uh, you run into somebody, you start dating somebody who you're really into. Right. And they don't know that you're on, on only fans. Right. How would you, how would you react to that? Like, what would you, uh, how would you, how would you bring it up or like, would you stop or um, what, what would you do about that? Well, I'd first ask like, I mean, if they found out and I never told them, I'd be like, well, what is your thoughts? And like, if they weren't happy about it, I probably would like just close it just to like make that person happy. Just because like, mm. I wouldn't want that to happen to me where like somebody had something that I wasn't very comfortable with and they just did it anyways. Like, I feel like I did it for my ex before, like he didn't want me to have one. So I didn't make one. But now that I'm single, I made one. So I just feel like I try to respect my partner and whatever their wishes are. Is right. that, yeah. No, no, no. That was, I, I was, uh, that was an interesting answer. I thought you would say, well, fuck them. I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, that's probably the go-to answer, but like, I'm not trying to like disrespect the person that I want to be with, you know? Right. No, for sure. Um, and 
have you ever had any like weird like stalker type people online and and, and not just necessarily you know limited to only fans but on any of your social media um because i feel like you know when you're 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 a, you're a female you know you're popular trying to get your name out there um there might be just people that are a little bit too you know uh into into it they're too clingy maybe they're they're just stalkers, you know. Have you ever had that? If you want me to be honest, I have a dude that keeps asking me for he wants me to like film myself cutting myself, and he's like, I want to see all the blood. And I'm like, dude, I'm not gonna do that for you. Like, can you stop asking? Like, I've been asked multiple times, and I'm like, that's not something I'm gonna do, you know? Yeah, that's really kind of perverse. <laughs> yeah, it's a you know, it's a bit psycho, but you know, like I was into that before, but now I'm like, I'm not not gonna do that. Like, it was like I think I was just in a little in a little mind state thing, but like now that I'm back to my normal self, like I'm like, what the hell? Like, can you stop asking me for such such weird things? Like, now. <laughs> Yeah, so and, that's, and, probably the, that's like I wouldn't say like a stalker, but like definitely a keep getting asked that by the same person. Mm-hmm. And, and and he it kind of he he sees it as like a sexualized type of thing. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. He's just like I want to get off to like you getting cut up, and I'm like that's a bit awkward. <laughs> I've never heard of that before. <laughs> I didn't until pretty recently too. So. <laughs> Yeah, know, that, that's a thing. But, um, you know, uh, last thing about like how how people socially see you, like, um, what about you know like potential employ- employers? You're not you're not at all worried about that. Somebody like stumbling upon your profile and being like, oh, wait a minute, I just hired this person. You know, and and the reason I say that, um, is just because you know you have seen that uh, in the news before. Where, I mean, but it's specific jobs. You know, where maybe like a teacher has done some sort of like nude modeling and it was, it was found by a student or a parent or something like that. And then all of a sudden, you know, they lose their job and um, there's nothing they can do about it. Right. Is, is that, is that a worry of yours in the back of your head at all or not really? Um, yeah, I've definitely thought about it. Like would it impact something that I want to do in the future? But like at the same time, like I feel like if, if you keep it private enough, like, I don't know how to describe it, but like, I feel like if you don't make it as known in your workplace or like try to hide it. So like, it's a little bit harder to find on your main stuff then like Mm -hmm. you should be fine. Like, as long as you're not just like full on posting, whatever you want, like I try to make it. So like you have to click a specific link just to see like one site with all my stuff, if that makes Mm -hmm. sense. Like, I don't want to have like, an Instagram page where it's like half nude stuff. And then they go off of that, you know, like I want to make it like hard for them to find. And then if they find it, okay, whatever. But like not every single employer is going to be against something like that, you know? Right. Right. No, for sure. Um, These days, you know, I think from what, from, from what I've seen, um, people expect to start like something like an OnlyFans, like as soon as they turn 18, right? That's kind of like the goal sometimes, like, uh, you know, you'll see, you'll see like, like (laughs) perverts online counting down the days till, you know, uh, a 17 year old girl turns 18 and like, oh, she's going to start her OnlyFans now. Right. What do you think Mm -hmm. about that? Uh, (laughs) To be honest, I've never really thought about that, but like, Mm -hmm. I mean, if the girls aren't like, if they are able to like handle all the weird stuff that comes with it, I mean, I just think you have to be mentally strong to have an OnlyFans. That's for sure. Like you have to be ready to like have people that want to comment on your body and your skin and things like that. Like, I just feel like if you're mentally tough enough, then go ahead. But you know, like it ain't going to bother me, <laughs> you know, I don't really care to be honest. Yeah. Cause a lot of people think that this is like a form of exploitation, right? Um, that's something also that came up in my, uh, um, you know, social media says poll is that people replied saying like, You know, I don't think it's empowering because it's a form of exploitation. You know, women would come a long way um, and now it's kind of taking a step back by, you know, selling uh, their their, uh, you know, their sex videos, nude pictures, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, Do you do you agree or disagree with that statement that it's exploitation? 
Hey, I'll be honest. I think it is, but like, I feel like only if you use it in the right way, like if you want to exploit stuff that like is going to get you further, then that's fine. But like, I don't know, like I always like, I don't like the thought of like people only following me for my ass, but Mm -hmm. I'm like people that want to continue to follow me. Like they'll just like follow me for fight stuff or whatever. But like, I don't know, like, it's a mixed feeling. Like I know that it is a form of exploitation because like, you're just like flaunting yourself. But like, I feel like if you're okay with it and like, you're not trying to hurt other people or like try to make an image on yourself where you're like making yourself look like a slut, then like, it should be fine. If that makes sense. Like, does that make sense? I'm just, (laughs) I've never really been asked this question. So the tough one, right? Now, you mentioned the word slut. Like, if somebody, you know, sees that you're on there and then they they make the assumption that you're a slut, right? What is what is your reaction to that? I kind of just have to accept it. I mean, that's what their opinion is. I mean, I, I know what I am. I mean, if they want to think that, then they can. But, like, yeah, it doesn't really bother me, to be honest, because, like, I've been called a slut through, like, my entire relationship with my ex. So, like, mm-hmm. that now that name is, like, completely numb to me it doesn't bother me at all anymore yeah and then you'll have the people that kind of want to psychoanalyze things and be like oh well you must have been you know uh abused you must have been you must have grown up you know uh uh, uh exploited or something like that right um again i'm not going to get into your you know personal business or anything like that but to make that to make that assumption right away that if you do something you know, in the, in sex work that you're automatically like somebody who's been, uh, you know, uh, abused. Is that, is that, is that fair? Is that a fair judgment? No, I don't think so. Cause like there are some girls that like are genuinely just like, they just love sex and they just love showing themselves. Like they don't have to have a bad past to be okay with that. Like I was never sexually abused in my entire life, but like I've been like hurt by other people never by my family or anything but like Mm -hmm. by other people that i've lived with like that hurts but like sorry what was the question again i completely lost track (laughs) (laughs) that's fine um just you know just asking um if if it's a fair assessment for people to uh, automatically assume that those that do some form of sex work are you know uh have been abused or 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 have lived like a crazy like uh, life where they're exploited I mean, I don't think so. Like, I mean, yeah, I mean, maybe some girls, but like every girl that I've talked to, they've had normal lives and they just do it because they love, they just love sex and they just love, you know, showing their body because they're confident and all the work that they put into like make them the way they are, you know, like I worked out really hard too. And it's nice to be able to like show off all your, comp- like all your hard work, you know, mm-hmm. even though it's not really like, you know, workout stuff, but like, I know that there's other girls that I follow and they're just happy. They just want to show, they just want to show their body because they're just happy with what they've accomplished. Right. Yeah. Um, now I, you know, me personally, I think, you know, I'm kind of on the fence where, um, I don't think it's negative, you know, I, I really don't, you know, because if you can make, you know, your name off of this, if you can make money off of it, you know, um, go for it. You know, it's, 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 it's a tool that you're able to use and, 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 and propel yourself ahead. You know, um, I am a little bit, you know, conflicted when, in, in that, the you know, the company itself takes money from the girls, you know, because I used to work at a strip club and, um, kind of felt bad seeing, you know, strippers, uh, you know, leave with like, maybe uh, like 20 bucks or something because they didn't, they didn't make anything, you know, they, they had to pay out the house. They had to pay out the DJ, the bouncers, everybody, you know, and a lot of people don't understand that's how it works, you know, but that's kind of a pattern I see in, 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 in sex work. You know, I don't know much about, you know, like, uh, like escorts or anything like that, but I assume, you know, that there's a cut as well, you know, to, to whatever agent or pimp or whatever, you know, so it's all kind of uh, there is there is there is a hint of, of exploitation there for sure. But I think in something like OnlyFans, you know, um, it's 
the the females are kind of taking the lead on it. You know, they're kind of saying like, this is what I'm going to release at my pace. You know, this is what I'm comfortable sharing. This is what I'm comfortable charging. Right. And so that um, in, in that essence, maybe it's 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 empowering, you know, um, I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a woman. I can't really speak on that, but I can definitely see both sides of the argument there. Yeah, me too. Definitely. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, I know there's negatives to it, but like, I just try to focus on the good things. Like, you literally just post because I don't know. I don't know if I feel the need for like attention and acceptance and all that, or like, or I just don't really care. I mean, I just want to post whatever I want to post without getting taken down or like flagged, you know, like, Mm -hmm. I don't know, like, I just feel like you should be able to post whatever you want. And I don't know, like, why not have like some sort of age restriction on your account? Or I don't know, like, because you have to put you have to actually like show your license when you make an account to Mm. prove your age. So it's like, why can't you just like, have it for some other things so that like, people can still post what they want to post. And then it still blocks it from the kids, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense for sure. I mean, we have the technology these days to do that, you know, right? Like, why is that so difficult? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, last questions related to this whole, you know, OnlyFans world, right? This is a little bit out of the realm. But I've wonder, you know, uh, since this is something that you you tried, um, have you considered uh, like other forms of of, of entertainment like this? Have like, have you considered, uh, you know, doing just straight up porn or or like, you know, uh, stripping or anything like that? Okay, I will never do stripping because I don't dance and porn I'll never do because I don't want to fuck just random people. I want to choose who I'm, you know, messing with, you know? Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean that's straight up pretty, pretty easy easy answer there. You, even even though the money would be better, you're just like I want to be the one in charge. Yeah, like I don't want to like, especially like I've heard I've literally like watched interviews from actual like porn stars and they talk about like it's a nine to five job and I'm like I could not handle that for sure. Like my body would not be able to handle that at all. So I'm like, at least when you do OnlyFans, like you get to choose like how often you do it and like yeah like people can't tell you oh you have to be here for a certain amount of time and like use your body even if you're sore like i just don't want to do that you know Mm -hmm. all right well we're going to close out this part of the conversation but is there anything else about you know only fans that you want to throw out there that people should know or like even just you know pitch it like what are they gonna what are they gonna get from you if they subscribe subscribe to you I mean, I just post a lot of free stuff. So, like, I'll post, like, free ass pictures and, like, free frontal stuff, you know. Like, I'll literally post, like, free masturbation videos. Like, it's whatever I want to post, you know. Like, if it's, like, real nasty, like, if it's, like, a really, really long video, I'll make it, um, I'll charge it. But, like, usually I just post free stuff because I just want a lot of likes and a lot of follows. So, you know. (laughs) And where, where can they find you on there? Do you have uh, like a like a URL or a handle on there? Usually. So like the way that I have it is I usually tell people to go to my Instagram. And then when they go to my Instagram, I have like the, the, you know, the link tree. I have one of those. And then like people can just click through the link tree and then they can click that and then it'll take them right to the page. I mean, because... I don't want because apparently on Instagram it they are targeting accounts that are um, promoting OnlyFans. So like, even if you have the website in the actual um, website link area for Instagram, like mm-hmm. they'll target your account. So like, I have it in my link tree so that it doesn't directly try to attack my account for just promoting that. You know, mm. they'll really they'll they, will they'll take those posts down or what? They'll like completely remove your account. Wow. Yeah, like that's, I literally heard other girls that have had that problem. Like they literally just put put an OnlyFans link and then their account is shut down because they promoted that and they're trying to like stop people from promoting OnlyFans on Instagram. See, I'm, I'm kind of social media stupid. I think I mentioned it to you before. Like, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't have anything other than Facebook up until last this last year where I started the podcast, right? Yeah. And so like I barely found... Uh, well, I mean, I knew of Instagram, you know, but I barely started seeing all the little like, you know, the little things about it. And that's how I found out about OnlyFans was through Instagram. So it's kind of weird. It's ironic, you know? 
Really? Yeah. That's pretty dope. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, cause people are always, you know, like models or, or whatever I was posting on there. And, um, you know, when I started trying to grow my, my, my podcast page, I'm just following everybody, you know, so, you know, all the models, all the influencers or whatever, you know, um, anybody who I felt would, you know, have an audience. I'm just like, I don't know how this works. Maybe if I just follow them, I might learn a thing or two, you know, but that's literally how I found out about OnlyFans. Like I had no idea it existed before that, you know, Where I literally, apparently it's been around since 2016, but I didn't even know about it till like last summer. Yeah. I, 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 I had no idea it's been around for that long. That's kind of weird. I mean, I wonder how many, how many people are actually on there at the infancy of it. Right. I've always wondered, like, did people actually make coin before it got big or like, I don't know, but it just recently exploded. So mm-hmm. I'm on it. <laughs> you know, I'm like, well, maybe we'll find a way we can find a way to improve it. We'll start a new one, make some, make some money off of them. We'll charge, charge the, uh, we'll charge a, 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 a smaller fee for all the, all the models. More deal for real. <laughs> Undercut the competition, right? <laughs> right yeah. for real yes <laughs> okay so they want to find you first they'll have to go to your instagram and then they can go from there yeah that's yeah because like i'm really not trying to have my account taken down just because i'm trying to promote a different platform you know okay you want to throw your instagram out there real quick it's victoria.dabian so d is in door e is in egg s is in sam b is in boy I is an indigo, E is an egg, N is a number, S is in Sam. Dot nineteen ninety seven. That is my Instagram. And I, I, I'm like, I'm gonna work on that pronunciation. I was like, no, I, I can't have your last name rhyming, rhyming with lesbians, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I was so worried about that. Like, I'm like, how am I gonna pronounce this? I'm like, I don't want to say it weird, it's you know? Good. It's all good. I should have figured it was it was a uh, French pronunciation, right? Literally, like anybody that is not French pronounces it the way that you say it, and then anybody that is French, they're like, "Oh yeah," they just say it perfectly because like they they know what it is. So uh-huh. it's all good. Don't worry about it. All right. So I want to jump into you know um, something else that we're on here to talk about, which was your YouTube channel, right? Uh, yeah. You you just started it how long ago? January 9th? That's like the first day that I posted anything. I think or no, January 9th is when I made it i don't know it was sometime this month <laughs> and and it's so it's literally i mean at time of recording about less than a month old right so yeah. um like maybe like three weeks old two okay. weeks old yeah and what was the motivation behind that why did you want to start um your youtube channel i know you you want to grow your brand a lot but um you know you do like a tell-all style right you tell <laughs> stories and stuff like yeah. that um I just literally because like nobody else wanted to listen to me so i'm like okay i'm gonna film it and then whoever wants to listen can listen <laughs> you know what i mean like people like if i try to tell people my story they'll be like cool i'll be like this is so boring like i need to talk to people that actually enjoy my story so i'm like dude like why not tell the whole world <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's just like a form of uh almost like therapy for you i guess so like I guess it's just like, I also wanted to do it because then I can document all the hilarious, stupid shit that has happened to me when I'm a young girl, you know? <laughs> you, uh, you know, you mentioned to me before that uh, you, know, you didn't even know how to edit. Yet. You know, you had to like go, go online and search how to go on YouTube to learn how to YouTube, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for real. I mean, like I literally, I had to learn how to, um, I just went on YouTube and then they learned how to do a jump cut and then basically how to do like a few more other things and I was like hey I'm, that's all I'm taking like I don't have time to learn all these little special effects like I'm just gonna do the bare minimum and then people are gonna take it or leave it you know mm-hmm. um in addition to your tell-all style I mean is there any other type of videos you want to do like uh you know there's people on there that do like reviews or like that uh they show off like some of their uh uh you know things that they unbox or whatever um is your intent to just kind of keep it more tell all style where you tell stories or are you looking to branch out into other, other, other things there? I mean, for now I wanted it to be like stories and rants and then like maybe like some workout stuff. Cause like I want it to be like some sort of fight related or like workout stuff. And then, you know, my life of like stories that I've had to deal with or things that I've done that are 
ridiculous, but that's mm -hmm. like what I want right now. But who knows? Maybe that'll change in like six months, but that's the goal for now. Yeah. Um, what's some of the feedback you've gotten on there so far? Like, do people like it? Do people are kind of indifferent or, or, or what's, what, what, what have you, what have you heard? Well, <laughs> apparently some people are telling the people that I'm making the stories about and the people that I'm making the stories about are hitting me up to be like, yo, you're talking about me on your YouTube channel. I'll be like, yeah, <laughs> but if you're like, I didn't say names. So like, you can't say anything. <laughs> right. But most people are like, yo, they're like, it's actually hilarious and like crazy that this stuff actually happens to you. <laughs> but yeah, like I don't have any negative feedback yet. I mean, I mean, like I make sure that I can allow people to like comment, whatever, like I'll accept hate comments, but like, I haven't had any really bad things. Like people give me criticism, like good things. Like they just be like, I just can't hear it enough or whatever. Or like you mm -hmm. just need to have a bit more brighter or something like actually giving me feedback, not just like, you know, just talk shit, you know? Yeah. No, that's cool. I mean, people are helping you improve your craft there. Right. Um, some of the headlines are pretty, you know, they grab your attention, right? Like, what do you have up there right now? I know you have like three videos up, right? I have four. So I have, I'll read them to you right now. So I got one. Okay. The first one, it was like <laughs> the first one. It's like, I did question mark, question mark with a professional athlete. And then the second one is, I hooked <laughs> up with my, or, sorry. The second one is I hooked up with my bestie. And then the third one is I did escorting. And then the last one is like today's bullshit. Cause I was just talking about like my ex-boyfriend and then like also this random dude that's like messing with me. Like, I don't know who it is, but like, they're trying to like mess with me through Instagram, like send me to this other account and then like try to talk shit. And I don't know, it's just like high school drama that I don't need. And mm -hmm. it's just, I just can't deal with it. So I just tell people all the stupid stuff and they're like, I can't believe this actually happens to you. And I'm like, dude, this is my life every day. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, those, some of those headlines are pretty grabbing, you know, and the one that stood out to me the most was the, the escorting one. I was really surprised by that. Like, uh, you know, um, I, I I watched the video and 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 I was like, whoa. You know, uh, my first question, I guess, would be, is I don't incriminate yourself here, but is is it legal in Canada? I think so, because like <laughs> I I think I mean like there's like actual like companies that run this, so I assume okay. I don't know. I've never heard of anybody going to jail for it. <laughs> Like, I've heard of, like, my ex-boyfriend's friends that, like, hit up escorts and stuff. So, like, I don't think it's illegal. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, for people who may not have uh, listened to it, just give, like, a short, like, tourniqueted version of that. What, what, what can they expect to hear if they tune in and, and watch that video? Well, I literally just explained, like, how I got in, like, how I started it, like, how I wanted to get into it, and then the people that I met and then <laughs> that pretty much scarred me for life. And I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. You know, like just the people that I had to meet. And I was like, okay, like I'm not, I don't get to choose who my customers are. So like, mm -hmm. that's the number one thing that turned me off. I'm like, cause like, you can't say no if they've already paid you, you know? Mm -hmm. So it so. lasted all of one day, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, you know, uh, maybe, maybe this wasn't for you. <laughs> no, it's definitely not. I definitely, that's why OnlyFans is like so much better. Cause like, you don't have to touch anybody that you don't want to touch. <laughs> mm -hmm. Especially not the, uh, the geriatric people. But yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I, I, even just hearing the amount, the quantity, you know, that you have to kind of like put out, um, in, in one day, it's just kind of, that's exhausting. <laughs> I know. It was so painful. I'm like, dude, I can't even do this. Like, it was like my body physically could not continue for like the next week. And I was like, hey, this is not something that I'm built to do, clearly. Yeah. You know, here in the U.S., it's uh, it's, it's it's pretty much still it's illegal um, other uh, other than like one county in the whole, you know, uh, in the whole uh, country or maybe more. I don't know. But it's pretty much illegal. So now uh, every time I drive by you know, the, the old, the old hookers on the boulevard, I'm, I'm going to really just tip my hat to them uh, <laughs> because that's a lot of work. <laughs> Where it is. I mean, like, I don't know for like most girls, like I feel like if you're pretty, you have to do more work. So, cause like, if you're pretty, you get more people that want to pay you. So you have to do more work, you know? Mm -hmm. 
Um, and uh, now, how many how many do you think they would get in a day? As opposed, I mean, because you you were like at like at least like what was like four or something like that. Yeah, it was four because I think that day I was working or something or I was doing something like they basically just like go off of your schedule. So like whenever you're home or like you get to choose, you get to choose if like you want to go to them or they come to you. And I was like, I am not going to anybody's house. Like they can come to my house or like I'm not doing anything. So like they just came to my house. Oh, wow. And you're comfortable with that? Yeah, I was like, well, if I'm going to die, it's going to be in my home. It's not going to be somebody else's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like the ones that are more active, what do you think? How many do you think they do per day? Who knows? Probably like 10 to 15. I literally, my, I used to live in the Southwest of my city and mm. I lived with my ex-boyfriend at the time. And then he went to go walk somewhere by himself. Like he was like, I was out at work or whatever. He was like outside walking around it. Some girl just like came up to ask him for a smoke or whatever. And then like, he didn't even ask this, but like, she's like, I just got railed by like four different groups. And I was like, ew, what the hell? I was like, dude, I don't know if she was an escort or what, but like, that's disgusting. Like four different groups, like not men, like groups. And I'm like, I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know. Yeah. All right. Well, what, what else, um, you know, can we expect to see on, on your YouTube? Like what's some upcoming ideas that you have for that? more story times of my stupid stuff like just like stuff that happens to me currently and then stuff that I remember throughout my childhood like I'm gonna talk about like the first time I got drunk <laughs> and like the first time I've done a, bu a bunch of other stuff and like you know just like stuff that all teenagers want to do and I'm just not afraid to say it I mean I won't out myself or some things but you know <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not trying to get myself locked <laughs> that's interesting though I mean it kind of like almost sounds like you know, some of the stupid shit I talk about with my friends on my on, on the podcast, you know, you ever you ever consider like going down that avenue, like doing a podcast or something like that? I want to. I mean, it would be nice, but like, I feel like I don't have that much to talk about. Like, I, I can, I'm not the, like, I want to say that I could talk a lot, but I feel like the other person has to like engage it for me to keep talking. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. they have to like keep the conversation going and then I can talk about it. Cause like, I'll just like forget about whatever I'm going to say. Like I just need somebody there to like remind me and like basically take control. Cause like, I'll just like go off on something and then I'll just forget the whole thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like kind of like a, like, like a co-host even or something like that. Or maybe like, uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Kind of somebody, somebody to keep it flowing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, with, youtube then if i mess up then i can just edit it out and like nobody has to see it but yeah i just feel, and i can also talk and like say whatever i want to say and not have other people judge it right away like mm -hmm. i guess a podcast i guess like you just have to say it and then accept whatever people hear but with youtube you get to edit i mean i know how to edit youtube better than a podcast so mm. yeah i just need somebody else to help me with all that i guess if that makes sense. And so how can people find your YouTube same way with the links on, on the Instagram? Yeah. And literally everything that I have is on my link tree on my Instagram, because that's the easiest way that I think is to get to my stuff. So mm -hmm. I use Instagram the most. So, or, uh, you know, like, uh, or what can we search on YouTube just in case somebody's just on YouTube? Um, like if, if they're trying to find my podcast or just, you know, search the name of the podcast. I think if I, I've never actually tried it myself, but I think if you search up Victoria cat, it might show up, okay. but yeah, that is the name of it. It's just called Victoria cat with a K. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. So yeah, if you guys are on YouTube, definitely, you know, look up Victoria cat, get some of those crazy stories. Listen to the escorting one. I'm telling you that one's <laughs> dang. <laughs> it is ridiculous, oh. isn't it? Oh yeah. Now, you know, um, with, with, uh, the podcast, you know, pretty much have free form the, talk about whatever, you know, I definitely did, you know, appreciate that you were able to share about OnlyFans, you know, want to get your promotion out there with YouTube and everything. Um, but you have other interests, you know, and you keep going back to this whole like fighting uh, thing, uh, MMA style stuff, kickboxing. Um, that's a big, that's a big part of your life, right? Yeah, I definitely feel like that's like my release, like 
other people might do soccer or swimming or something, but I definitely enjoy like martial arts, whether it be Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or Muay Thai or boxing. Like I can do all of them, but the most fun is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu because I love rolling. Like there's no better feeling than throwing somebody <laughs> and then just like mounting them and just like getting them to tap out. I just love it. You know? <laughs> yeah. No. How, how long have you been doing that? I mean, I only did Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I started in August, 2020 because it just took forever for me to get over my fear of rolling with guys, but now I'm back into it and it's all good. But I did Muay Thai for like three years straight and I did it like full time. Like I was competing and stuff. So okay. that I went hard. So then I took a break and then I started Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but I also was injured a lot. So I can't really train Muay Thai as much as I'd like to anymore, just because my ankle is not up to par. Like it doesn't, it can't handle the intensity as it, as it used to. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a pretty big fan of MMA. You know, I did, I did wrestling for, for like, you know, a very long time all throughout high school and uh, a little bit in college, you know, coached a little bit. Um, the next step was obviously like, hey, you know, why don't you try MMA? You know, I had a, a friend who um, his uncle was running a gym and they were doing, you know, monthly fight nights, you know, like call them smokers, you know, because they're. Hey, um, yes, you're smokers. Yeah, we have that here, yeah. too. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're unsanctioned fights or whatnot, but these were pretty cool. You know, um, yeah. we made a big deal of it and everything um, where the, you know, there would be like 500, 600 people there, you know? So it was pretty cool. Yeah. Word. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> you know, it was about 2007, 2008, kind of at the, at the start of its, of, of, of like the whole popularity with the UFC, because I, I know UFC had been around since 93 but really, it started getting popular about, you know, 2004, 2005, 2007. You know, everybody had a fight, fight uh, brand company, you know, shorts, shirts, whatever. Um, I think nowadays it's really kind of just like a select few. I don't even think Tap Out it really exists as a fight company anymore, right? Word, I, I, was, I can't remember when they ended, but, you know, Affliction and all them, they did not last very long. <laughs> Uh-huh. But I mean, I was like back then they had like a bunch of different, uh, you know, clothing like warrior wear, affliction, uh, even the, 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 you know, the branch off of affliction, the Randy Couture brand, the extreme couture, um, you know, uh, there, there was sprawl. I don't even know if they exist anymore. Uh, uh, they even had like stores, you know, like, uh, OTM on the mat, uh, fight stores. Those are really cool. It'd be like, you know, going, going in there and they have everything you need, you know? So, I mean, it was definitely a, uh, a cool part of, 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 you know, uh, being into MMA, into MMA was like, a, like your own little, you know, uh, your own little niche kind of thing that not too many people were into, you know? Um, yeah, definitely. So what, what, uh, what you mentioned, you did uh, kickboxing or sorry, uh, Muay Thai for three years, right? It's a difference of, uh, for people that don't know, there is a difference between Muay Thai and kickboxing, right? Yeah, there is. Um, Muay Thai is, they say, the art of eight limbs just because, like, you add knees and elbows and clinching. But, mm -hmm. yeah, that's definitely I – lo I love doing elbows. <laughs> that's yeah. definitely my favorite. Um, what, got, what got you into that? Like, how did you, how did you start that? Well, I, because <laughs> I want – I don't – like, I want to say it, but I'm like, I don't want people to think, like – I'm like trying to get pity or anything, but like I was just in a situation where a dude had held me down and I couldn't get out. Like I tried to get out, but he like was stronger than me. And I was like, I'm never going to let a dude have this type of power over me again. So like, I just decided to start learning Muay Thai. And then ever since then, nobody ever messed with me. So that was pretty much why I started it. So. Did you do any, any smokers or, or, or did you uh, do any competitions for Muay Thai? So I did two tournaments and I only did two because I kept getting injured and then eventually I injured my got so injured that I just couldn't even do it anymore but I did did two wait no I had three fights so I had two fights for the tournament and then I had one fight for the nationals so yeah I had three fights so that's pretty much as far as it went and I lost two because like I was not as experienced like I wasn't trained for very long but I was just like thrown in there so um, I just try to forget about that, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to like move on and then start Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and I want to get all the colors of the belts. So that's my new, my new goal. 
So you you uh, you you started off you're you're at white belt right now for 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 jujitsu. Yeah, white belt for yeah because I just started a couple months ago, but then COVID hit, and then now we're just been shut for like three four months now. Like I haven't been to the gym since October. So. Mm-hmm. What's the goal with all of this? Do you want to get into MMA or do you want to do like some Brazilian Jiu Jitsu tournaments? Um, it, or is it just something to kind of you know uh, to do as because you're passionate about it? Um. I definitely want to compete. Like, I just want to have, like, I want to have, like, all the colors of the belts. And then I just want to have, like, one title. Like, one title. It'd be nice to have one. (laughs) I don't care what it is. Just, like, a title for something. Like, even if it's just nationally or, like, regional or something. Like, I don't know. It'd be nice to have some sort of achievement, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So, I mean, uh, do you want to put that together and do a fight or no? Probably will once I get more trained. Like, I definitely do want to compete. So, I mean, maybe I'll do MMA. Who knows? Like, it's definitely not out there. You know what I mean? Like, if the option is there and I feel comfortable enough, why wouldn't I do it? You know? Yeah. Now, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, uh, what, who are some of your, your favorite fighters? I'm going to go out on a limb here and say you, you, you probably really like George St. Pierre. I mean, he's all right. He's all right. But I'm saying, okay, I'll tell you my top three, top three favorite fighters. Okay. Nick Diaz, Michael Bisping, and then Chael Sonnen. Those guys. Those are my favorite. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I was like, I was, I just figured that, uh, you know, uh, 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 St. Pierre was like the, uh, everybody's love in, in Canada, but maybe not, huh? I mean, like, I do like him, but like, I'm just going to say, I just happen to love Nick Diaz more. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what is he like his fighting style? I mean, he hasn't fought in forever, right? I know, but I just love him. I just <laughs> like I just love him as a person, you know, like <laughs> uh-huh. I'm just like obsessed with him. Like I think he's so hot and I just think he's like the best fighter ever, even though if he's lost. Like, who does the Stockton slap against Carlo Condit? Come on now. Like <laughs> that's some legendary shit right there. Yeah, he uh you know, the whole shit talking during the fight the, is, is entertaining to see for sure. Yeah. Um, so then uh, you you mentioned you mentioned Chell Sonnen too, another shit talker. <laughs> they all I'm, talk start- it. I'm starting to see a theme here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Michael also talks shit too. He talks shit to George before when they fought too. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, so this thing it's kind of crazy about his eye. That, did, you, did, you, did you see that where he took out his eye? Ugh, I can't watch it. It's so nasty. I'm like, can you just like leave out the part? I just want to just pretend like you have both eyes. Like it's just so gross. Yeah, like, I had no idea. I think, I mean, I don't know the timeline on that, but it, I think it was probably after uh, uh, what's his after name? He, um, he tore Belfort. Yeah, he's, he was all jacked up on roids and he yeah, fucked him it, up. Yeah. Somehow, I don't know exactly how it happened, but I think his finger got in his eye or something. I can't remember, but like. That sounds absolutely disgusting. I mean, poor Michael. He's had like two knee replacements. He's got, he had surgery for his neck, like for his spine, because he had to get something replaced there. Mm-hmm. Like, and whatever else he has to deal with, like yeah. the eye. He's just like a broken person trying to like be real, like a robot. <laughs> he's just trying to like get repaired now. <laughs> yeah, he's, he, he's kind of like half robot. Yeah, but uh, I got to give it to him, man. Cause like after the, the whole, you know, Dan Henderson like killing him. You know, with that, with that, with that H bomb, you know, I was like, "Fuck that!" How are you gonna bounce back from that? Like, just mentally, you know. I mean, he somehow did it because he became champion of the world. So exactly, I mean, that doesn't ex- if that's not like the definition of perseverance. I don't know what is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that impressed me for sure. And then he came back and beat one of the best. You know, he beat right? Anderson Silva. Like, how can you not love Michael? And, like, Michael, he's just, like, he's just genuinely funny. Like, and he's just, like, so personable. Like, I just remember, like, he would live stream when, because he came to my city one day or one year when UFC came to my city. And he was, like, just running around the city. And, like, he was just, like, saying hi to people as they said hi to him. And I was, like, he's just, like, seems like such a dope person. Like, I just want to, like, have a conversation with him. Like, just hang out with him for, like, one day. I just think it would be so cool. Yeah, from what I understand, because uh, his son uh, wrestles out here in California. I think he's in, he's in high school right now. Um, yeah, he, actually, he's in college. He finished, I think he oh. finished like two years ago or something. But he's like, he's almost 20 years old now. But yeah, he's in college and he has been doing really good. And apparently he had to go back home from, he couldn't even stay at the college because they shut down for COVID. So he's still trying to do all that, you know. 
Yeah, from what I heard from the people that would go to the wrestling tournaments, who's like, just like you said, very nice guy, you know, uh, was doing the photo ops and everything. So kudos to that guy, man. Work, he's pretty cool. I def- and like Chill's pretty cool too. Like Chill, like he's he's like the, the bad guy, but like it's a character. Like uh-huh. he's just like Michael too. Like they're both really nice people. Like I could hang out with them. I would like to hang out with them. <laughs> That'd be so <laughs> dope. I mean, like, okay, like I love Nick Diaz, but like I feel like I wouldn't want to meet him just because like I don't know, like not that he's a bad person or rude or anything, but like they say don't meet your idols. So I'm like, mm-hmm. I just don't want to have a bad experience, you know. Right. Don't don't even want to risk it. Yeah. I'm just like, can I just love you from afar? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think have you ever have you ever met any any of those fighters? No, definitely not. <laughs> I've not met I mean, anybody cool. <laughs> yeah, I remember the, you know, the, uh before it really hit and got big, you know, I remember meeting like, you know, Tito Ortiz and Chuck Liddell, um, those those guys, you know, that in that era, you know. And it was always it was always pretty cool to kind of see like, hey, wait a minute, they're not that big, you know. Like, you think you see them on TV, you think like these big imposing figures, right? Yeah. Um, but you're like, wait, they just look like normal guys, you know. But I mean, uh, like, like I know a UFC fighter, but like I don't fuck with him no more because <laughs> he's like, I'm just not like he's just, you know, he thinks he's all that, but he's not. <laughs> oh, like current in the current roster. Sorry, what? On the current, like he's on the current roster. Yeah, he is, but I'm not trying to say names because, like, oh no, yeah, for sure. <laughs> We're not getting sued here, right? Oh. We're not getting sued today. <laughs> <laughs> no, or or ever, no, no, no. Yeah, or ever. ever. <laughs> for real though, but, I mean, like, people can figure it out. Like, <laughs> I'm sure that it's in the comment section on my YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> How about uh, some of the female fighters? Like, who are some of the female fighters that you really like? I really like um, Megan Anderson, for sure. She's pretty cool. She's, like, I think she's just, like, so dope. I don't know why. Like, especially because she's Australian. But her, definitely Valentina Shevchenko, for sure. Mm. Um, Felice Herrick, she's pretty dope. She oh. literally, said, she literally, like, she sent me a happy birthday message one day. Like, couple like 2018. I was like, dude. That's pretty dope. Like, she didn't even know that it was my birthday, but like, she just happened to watch my story one day, and I was like telling her, like, saying it was my birthday and stuff. She said, "Happy birthday!" I was like, "That's so dope." <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, she's one of like the really old school ones, right? Yeah, I've um, been following her since like Tough eighteen, like the first time I saw her. So she's mm-hmm. been a long time. Like I've known about her for a long time, but definitely Felice Herrick, Megan Anderson, Valentina, of course, and mm-hmm. then. Joanna Jacek. Who could forget about her? She's oh, and Tiffany Van Seuss. Who doesn't like her? Yeah, I mean, what do you think of like, uh, you know, they it was like uh, UFC used to be like the boys club. You know, it was uh, even Dana White used, uh, used to say like a woman will never fight in the octagon, right? Um, what okay. do you think like Ronda Rousey breaking through and stuff like that? I think that's probably like pretty cool. I mean, like, I mean, like what now only. In the 20, 21st century, women are finally getting to, like, have the same experiences as men. Like, I don't know. I feel like more women should be promoted. Like, I don't know. I feel like, yes, Valentina and Amanda Nunes, but, like, you don't really hear about, like, the girls that recently just fought, like, Marina Rodriguez, Rodriguez and um, Amanda Rivas. Like, they're not that big of stars, but they literally opened the main card and, like, probably had, like, one of the best fights on that card. Mm-hmm. But like you don't hear them being like hyped up like Dustin is, you know. Right. Yeah. And and you know, when I used to coach like girls wrestling, sometimes girls just go to war, you know, they come yeah. like passionate, they don't want to lose, like um, they fight for their lives kind of thing, you know. Um yeah, it's pretty and yeah, it's 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 a different it's a different uh it's a different world sometimes how 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 badly they want it sometimes. For real. Like I mean, I wanted to do it too, but I just feel like my body can't physically handle it. Like it can't handle like professional work, sadly, but I'm just going to stick to getting stuff that I can, I can just do my, like do here and, you know, like not have to worry about all the pressure about the whole world. And also like, I would not want to get choked out for the first time on like TV. That would not be a fun time. (laughs) Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, uh, you know, I think once you get choked out or knocked out, you know, your brain starts deteriorating real bad, yeah. too. 
Yeah, like like how George and Michael were talking on their podcast the other day about how the weight cut definitely doesn't help with all that. So like, I just feel like people should only do it if they aren't going to do it. Like, I feel like you should only do it in your prime because if you do it any time other than that, like you're just basically setting yourself up for future injury and like probably long-term stuff, you know, like, I mean, Michael did it for 10 years. What? Like almost 11 years. Like mm. and now look at the future that he has. Like, I just know that I don't want to have a life like that where like, I'm pretty much like in a wheelchair at age 50, you know? Yeah. That's definitely something to avoid there. I mean, just a little bit that I did it, you know, I really messed myself up too, you know, other than the years of wrestling, I think one, one thing I really messed up my back was, you know, just even just hitting the, the damn uh, bag. I remember throwing knees and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't get up off the gym floor one day, you know? Oh, so, Lord. yeah. So really, you know, the, the constant, you know, uh, impact on your spine and, you know, things like that. Um, it doesn't lend itself to like, like, a, like a long, uh, practice or career you know so that's something you want to do you have to know like hey it's gonna be a short turnaround yeah definitely like I thought that I was gonna be able to handle it but like if you keep getting injured you're just gonna it's just gonna make it even harder to compete so like I just feel like if you've done it and then like your body is clearly telling you that you this is probably not what you should be doing then maybe you should not you know but Mm -hmm. I mean like I just find other things to do I mean maybe I can't focus on Muay Thai 100%, but now I can learn a whole other martial arts, which is way more fun that I've learned. Right. All right. Well, you know, we, we covered a few things, you know, we talked about the OnlyFans, talked about your YouTube, talk about MMA. Is there anything out there you want to throw out to the, to the podcast world? Anything else you want to talk about? Um, let's see. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and this is, this is your first podcast just so, you know, to catch people up, right? Yeah, I mean, maybe just like follow my Instagram and my YouTube, and then if they want to follow my OnlyFans, they can. <laughs> because it's free. Yes, it's free. They, and yeah. I don't really, I'm not going to change it to sub anytime soon. So, yeah. Well, I, yeah. I again, appreciate having you on, you know. Um, definitely, you know, um, I'm always open. I always have people return on the podcast, you know, kind of like, what do I call it? Like recurring co-hosts, right? Thank you. Yeah. So if you ever have anything else you want to promote, you know, or if there's any other, other topic you ever want to, you know, throw in there, uh, always open to having you back. Um, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're just, a, we're like on this podcast, you know, it's, it's, it's a free form and we're just a bunch of friends having conversations, you know? Can I shout out somebody if like, if I can, you can do I mean, whatever you want. Go ahead. Yeah. Like if you also want to follow, um, twerk YYC on Instagram, she's pretty dope. Like, She's definitely a really dope girl. And I told her I'd shout her out because, you know, I think she deserves it. So there you go on Instagram, twerk YYC. That's it. All right. Any, anybody else or, or your, or your uh, social medias again? Yeah. My Instagram is victoria.debian.1997 and it's spelled D as in door, E as in egg, S as in Sam, B as in boy, I as in indigo, E as in egg, N as in number, S as in Sam, and then dot 1997. So that is my Instagram. And then all of my other stuff will be linked in the link tree there at the bottom there. So we're Perfect. All right. Well, yeah, I hope everybody uh, enjoyed this episode. Uh, for everybody listening at home, appreciate it. Thank you. Fuck you and good night. <laughs>